provides program services and resources for high-risk behaviors to include sexual violence, domestic violence, dating violence, stalking, and bullying. One of her favorite quote is, lean into discomfort, dig deep inside yourself, connect your head and heart, and take action accordingly. We need to stand up for each other and make our learning environment and community safe for everyone. Mary Kay's areas of expertise are residential life, campus conduct officer, student activities and leadership, and programs that assist first generation students. Campus Life provides opportunities for students to learn and engage outside of the classroom. She has 13 years of leadership experience in higher education and 20 plus years in management. She earned her master's of education degree from Northern Arizona University. And her co-presenter is Curtis Peterson. Curtis Peterson is the Interim Behavior Health Coordinator at Arizona Western College and Associate Faculty of Psychology. Curtis also teaches human services courses for University of Phoenix, Yuma campus. Curtis' primary role at the college is to provide education and training to students, faculty, and staff on creating a violence-free and safe campus, and to assist students who have behavioral issues in achieving their educational goals. Curtis' area of expertise is within the field of social psychology, studying and implementing programs for the prevention and intervention, intervention of relationship violence. Curtis also studies the development and maintenance of intimate relationships. Curtis is currently working towards his PhD in social psychology. Let's welcome our presenters. First of all, thank you very much for choosing us. Um, this is a uh, tough, the last session of the day, so we're gonna have to be extra entertaining and mm -hmm. keep you on your toes, but hopefully you were intrigued by our title. Uh, we don't negotiate with terrorists, so we put together a, a presentation, hopefully to help you just kind of understand the trends of behavior we're seeing in, on campus and in the classroom and some tips and tricks about hopefully how to help you uh, do what you do best, which is to teach and educate and um, give you some resources that we have that uh, you might not be aware of that can help make your job easier and so you can focus on teaching and not managing behavior. Would you like to say anything, Mr. Peterson? I, th I think you got it. Okay. I think we're, we're good All to All right, go. so we're gonna go around the room and have everybody introduce themselves. Just give us your name and what you teach, or what you do for Arizona Western College, or both. And um, then we're gonna split you into groups. So why don't we start with you, sir? I'm Rodney Abel, and I teach the music. Music, okay. <laughs> I'm Laura Shepard, I'm the program coordinator for the Peace Program with the Night Vision. Great. I'm Tara Wells, and I'm an outreach coordinator with the Night Vision Group. Welcome. This is Robert Schiller, and I teach the Night Vision. Kim Hoppelhand, I also teach the Night Vision. Joanne Kelly, the biologist. Great. I'm the music critic for the Night Vision Program. Great. David Sturgeon, Arizona Western College, Director for Construction Studies and Sports. All right. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So what we want to do is, um, i got to get a sense of how many people, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I've got, okay, so we four. need, uh, yeah, three. three groups, three, Yeah. three in a group, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, Joanne, you're one, two, three, okay, so all the ones, how about ones up here, two's somewhere there, and three's here. We're going to work through some scenarios and we'll give you instructions once you get in your groups. And so what we want you to do in your groups, I've given you your scenarios. You'll see all the scenarios, but you're going to focus on your scenario, your one. You guys have two and three. This one has a scenario four, which has two parts, so it's pretty long. Take the time to read it. On the flip chart, we want you to kind of, from the report, tell me what could some of the prevention have been by the instructor um, and by the students. What's the post-event, meaning what are five things instructors should do after the event? If that makes sense, flip your page. And then you're gonna go over to the issue for us. What was the issue in the scenario? The instructor issue and the student issue. So there's different issues in each report, right? So you gotta kind of figure this out. 
And what could this instructor have done differently? Does that, is that making sense? And we'll walk so around and help you. So it might help to, to start with the second page so that you go through your scenario and you'll write down what the, what the issue is that you, you come to agreement on in your scenario and then write down the behaviors of the instructor and the behaviors of the student that then brought it to where, it, where your scenario ended up. Does that make sense? And then you can look at what could have we done to prevent it, what could have we done in the moment to make the outcome different and then what we could do in the post event to make sure the, the, the student is successful in the future or, or the class is successful in the future. So these are sense. real reports that I've received that Curtis and I have worked on and some of them don't get too hung up on literal because it's people putting the report in so sometimes you might think there's an issue, go ahead and put that down. So um, from your experience and all of that so you'll understand more as you read through there's a lot woven into these scenarios. So we're going to give you about 20, let's say about 10 minutes to start reading, and then we're going to really take 20, but then you'll present back to the group your scenarios, and we'll work through all of that, okay? So go ahead and start. Stay in your groups, and hopefully you picked somebody that will kind of represent the group and uh, briefly, briefly tell the group what your scenario was about. Just recap it. Don't read it. Everybody has every scenario. The group has every scenario. Briefly recap it, and then just kind of start with the issues and run through your flip chart. So I'm going to start with uh, group one. Confrontation, right? Yeah, they didn't physically fight. So on our sheet for prevention, for prevention, we moved. Yeah, start in the back. There you go. Because in the scenario, the student says the girls are loud and you don't do anything about them, but you're picking on me, kind of yeah. in that. Great. Back to the front. So for prevention, we said the professor could have set rules and expectations. We don't know if this happened, but maybe uh -huh. if it had, the student wouldn't have rebelled so much in class. And then we kept going back to fairness and consistency. So how do we move on consistently with Great. students? Um, post event, we said the professor should report it, which the professor did. Uh, the professor should follow up with the student and reflect on his approach. Great. Things that I would point out, now these are real things that, uh, that get reported to me. So at this point, we, we just filed this for documentation. Um, but let me give you something that I look at. Right away, when you write that the student had a history, I'm like, I don't know how long, but why do we let this go on? Because he's tired, or he or she is now negative about this, right? And it comes across in their writing. So one tip for me right now is don't let things go five times. 
address it, report it that first time, because I watch all this that comes in, and so I'm reading it, and the instructor can tell me, just file for documentation. I met with them, they understand my expectations, and all of that, and I file. If I get another one, it's like, I'm gonna meet with them. So then I'll pull them in, and typically, my conversation is, um, what was on the syllabus, what was on the first day handout, do you respect the professor? Because that's key, right? They have to respect you, because if we're bantering, there's a lack of respect for me. So, and then I have to say, if you don't respect this professor, you need to transfer to another classroom. And that usually gets the big eyes. So, because it's also, our professors are the experts in the subject matter, you need them to get your degree, so you have to figure out how to behave in their classroom and not disrupt it, and they can ask you to leave every single time. But if you ask someone to leave every single time and you don't report it to me, the first time you report is the first time for me. And you don't have the authority to remove them from class for the year or the semester, but after several reports, we'll pull them in and then we'll make that decision. He'll go, they'll go to a formal hearing and we can talk more about that. But awesome, those were great, great stuff. It's about setting rules and expectations, um, fairness and consistency is kind of a theme throughout, and report, report, report. And we'll talk more about tips and tricks. How about group two? There's a ghost. And, yeah. So then what happened is um, the professor said, not right now. Um, he's in the middle of instructing. And, and then the student kept interrupting and interrupting. And um, the professor said, finally said, how many times do I have to say it? I think he was like, at that point, he was fed up. Um, and then um, so the student just continued to smirk and sit there. And, and the professor has had problems with the, with the same student. student but especially a student leader I don't like that and then the other thing right they miss the test preview and then expect the instructor to stop what they're doing to catch them up in class right so that's how I read the whole scenario 
So for me, that's unacceptable. But the instructor should never shouldn't have said, I'll, I'll, I'll answer your questions at the end of class, but right now I'm going to keep going, because you missed yesterday. So there's an expectation from students, right, that you should stop what you're doing and take care of me, but I chose not to come to your class yesterday. But I'm not going to be held accountable for that. I expect you to stop and, and deal with what I need right in that minute, right, that instant just, justification. So that's a trend we're seeing in, in classroom behavior as well. So how about four? We'll go here real quick. The student is just making really loud, disruptive noises, taking the notebooks really loudly, and um, the professor um, kind of just, you know, stops teaching and, you know, makes her own noise to kind of demonstrate what the student's doing and uh, kind of point her out, point out her noise. Um, and then the student, you know, um, Let's see. Oh, the professor goes back to her syllabus or the first day countdown and says, any noise, you know, obvious needless noise is inconsiderate and could be um, seriously disruptive, um, be considerate, and things like that. So she pointed out one of the things that was in her first day handout. The student protests and, um, you know, openly says that I have an appointment with my dean or the dean and um, says, I'll see you there. Okay, so, and then she was already leaving before. Um, professor could call the police again, I guess. And so that was kind of the really short <laughs> version, <laughs> of, version of it, of what uh, kind, of ha kind of happened. So when the police came the second time, and uh, the police uh, basically talked to the teacher and talked to the, the student, and then actually the, the teacher put the entire class basically on display, asking them, you know, what, which they side with, and if they see anything different from her perspective. And uh, the police took both the students, stuck them for a while outside, and put them up at her, and then the teacher as well. And uh, uh, that I think, and there was a police report saying that the students were there again. The student kept taunting, like on the last incident, the student uh, kept taunting the teacher, like the teacher said, "I'm going to have to call the police again on you." And go ahead, kind of thing. Let's see how many times you can do this, like challenging and testing this teacher to see how many times. The calling and reporting the students to the police um, before something gets resolved here. So um, our instructors, we think the instructor was from the get-go defending himself or herself to the student when they started this back and forth uh, arguing where one saying, don't shout at me, the other one was saying, I'm not shouting at you, justifying the behavior. And she was also, or he was in here, he, <coughs> the professor. He was also responding every time the student started something to the student's provocations by either responding directly to the student, student or mimicking behavior or um, singling that student out throughout the scenarios. The students issues, arguing with the instructor, not leaving the classroom when they were told, complaining in front of the class about the instructor since the get-go, and challenging the professor by continuously doing this behavior. What could the instructor have done differently not respond and continue to instruct um, to the aggravations of the student. Offer alternative time to meet with the student to discuss any issues um, that they have encountered with them. Um, and also have a person in there since they've already seen that the student was going to be a problem student. Not place other students in the middle of the situation and be professional regardless of the situation that was occurring in their classroom. Um, things that this professor could have done to prevent this, require feedback from students, um, maybe on a, you know, like on a survey kind of matter, if things were happening and they were, if he was, the other students were noticing that there was something disconnecting in their classroom and they were not really learning the outcomes or not understanding what they were supposed to be um, learning in the classes and that's why the other student just reacted to put, being put on the spot and saying, I didn't learn anything from you. Um, and also, even though this professor at the end was refreshing the class on policies and getting the syllabus out, but just you know, reminding them every single class of courteous behavior and responsibilities that they have. Um, what do, should the instructor have done post-event? Document the incident since the very beginning and contact uh, campus life to discuss oh. options on how to handle the student. Good job. So, so this one, I was telling the group, uh, one, there's a reason, there's three reports I couldn't keep up. So by the time I got in the meeting, we already had two more documentations. 
And I read the first one, I was like, I'm going to pull this one in. And I went with, um, why are you shouting at me? You don't need to do that. Call the police, go ahead, do that. For me, we're taunting, right? So the, this student very much, the trend I'm seeing, that's why we labeled it princesses and princes. They come in because it was very much, uh, you professors aren't good because I'm not getting it. I'm not learning anything, so he's not a good professor. And I'm all, oh, really? And then, or they'll say, I paid to be here so I can behave however I want. And that's not how it works. And I'm like, it's college, it's not high school. So when I see that type of behavior, I'm right away like, I'll get in with them because that attitude of entitlement, I'm seeing a lot more of it. And they're challenging more at a higher level of, go ahead and call the police. Don't shout at me. Answer my questions. I missed yesterday, or I slept through class, and I expect you to stay behind and answer them for me now. And then they're mad that you don't stay behind and answer every question that they slept through your class with. What I would tell professors, don't stay and answer the questions. You slept through my class. That was your choice. But I am moving on, right? Talk to your classmates about it. So the trend very much is this, we're better than you. And I'm not sure where that's coming from. So I met with the, the student in this scenario. And it was very much that this instructor doesn't know what they're doing. They're not a good teacher. And I said, maybe you're not getting it. And her eyes were like, oh my god, what? And I said, yeah, this is college. So maybe you're not getting the material. It's not that the instructor isn't teaching. Or maybe you just aren't good with their style, right? So I said, OK, as a college student, you can transfer classrooms. Can I do that? I didn't know I could do that. Absolutely, you can. And I said, why do you choose to take on the instructor? Because the instructor's not going anywhere. So I think they think they can take down the instructor. And I'm like, what do you think is going to happen? We're going to fire the instructor? And I think she didn't know what to do. Because I was like, they're not going anywhere. And if you're not learning or not getting it, maybe you need to switch over and find an instructor that you have the style, that, that fits your style. That's part of being an adult and doing all of that. So the outcome of that one was we transferred her out to another um, section. But she fought that too because she really likes being in this class at this time and this day. <laughs> right? Well, that's just great. Then figure out how to behave and respect the instructor. And I always ask you to respect the instructor. Because for me, if they don't respect the instructor, we need to move them out. Because it's not fair to you all to sit with that disrespect all the time. And um, I always, my other thing that I want you to know, the support is, until you earn the degree and become the expert in the subject matter, then we'll talk about how to teach, right? Because how, how is an 18-year-old coming in to tell me how you are as an instructor? How are they the, the consultant? You know, I'm just like, how are you the expert in this? But they're seeing it as, I'm not getting this, so you, you are not a good teacher. So I'm seeing that trend a lot. Um, the whole disruptive thing of, if you don't nip it in the bud right away, I, they do it to push the boundaries to see how in control of your classroom you are, how far they can go and push your buttons. So we'll talk a little bit more about tips and tricks of that. But there is a trend, I hope you kind of heard throughout the scenarios, it's very much they act like uh, they do nothing wrong. The rattling of the paper, the young lady goes, well, it wasn't loud. And I'm all, that's not up to you to decide, right? If I think it's loud, it's loud. If I think you're being disruptive, you're being disruptive. So it's really subjective for the instructor the professor to decide that. You don't get to argue that. If I think you're being rude, you're being rude. And um, so she was wanting to argue with me about the details of, was it this loud or did I say that? And I'm like, we're not arguing the details. You need to learn to be quiet and respect the instructor and ask questions at the end. So, so with that, we, I don't know if you want to add any more, Curtis, to the scenarios. Oh, I've got the mic. I stole it. So. Let's move on to, we were going to talk a little bit about setting the tone. So for me, it's real crucial. What I would tell each and every one of you is, it's got to be on that first day handout. You need to really think about it before you get in there, about things to think about that I've seen. What are you going to do with cell phones? Where do, how are you going to handle that? Are they need to put them on the desk? Can they text in your class? What are you doing about talking to others? How are you going to address it? Is it a, can you step out? What if two are sitting up here talking, are you going to split them up? The one scenario, he split them up, but he didn't say, that's your permanent seat now. you got to think through that. I would have said, that's your permanent seat now because we, I need it to stay calm. Because right, the student stayed for a couple of weeks and then went right back. Oh, is that my permanent seat now? Right? Pushed. 
it was like, oh, I'll sit there for a while, but now I'm going to work my way back up. So think through that of once you, you separate them, tell them straight up, that's it. You're staying there from now on. Where I've put you is where you're going to sit so I can learn names. If I move you, that's your permanent seat. Just think about how you want to manage your classroom. Um, how do you want them to ask questions? Some of the scenarios, is it raise your hand, please? Is it just speak out? So if, if they start interrupting, you just have to be ready of what are we going to do? How do we handle that stuff? Um, or how do they interact with each other? Lateness, think about that because sometimes they think it's no big deal to walk in late and then they expect you to catch them up. So you got to set that tone right away. Uh, if you come in late, I'm not going to catch you up. That's what your classmates are for. So you got to set that tone. Cheating, what are you going to do with cheating? And remember, if you suspect they're cheating, that's, that's okay. Um, we'll talk more about the process for academic dishonesty of what we do with that. You have the first right of everything, right? So if they're cheating, you get that first interaction of what to do with them. And I would just add to that, make sure, uh, you know, when we're talking about prevention and setting up your classroom, remember that you set the tone on the first day um, of how you want your class to be. And what I would encourage you to do on your first day handout Make sure that when it comes to defining things that you make sure on your first day handout, put the link to the uh, student code of conduct that talks about plagiarism, talks about harassment, talks about how this will be reported. But the other thing that I would encourage you to do is on it when you say what is cheating in your classroom, you put on it that is your perception of cheating. And then the way to explain that in class is, if I see you cheating, that is my perception and you are cheating. There will be no questions asked, okay? And so, and then run through a scenario, say, so I think that Laura is cheating because she's looking over on your test. If she disagrees with me, guess who's cheating? Laura, because it's my perception. And make sure you establish that with students on the first day, is you don't need, as an instructor, evidence to say that someone is doing something in your classroom. That's, that's. I don't, um, it, you, get to, you get to discipline for cheating. You can give them a zero. You can let them make it up. Um, I don't need to have all the class papers to show that the others didn't plagiarize. I don't do that that far. I trust that you do it. That's what you do. My, what I do is my office sends out a letter saying, you've been documented for academic dishonesty cease and desist this behavior or you will be coming to my office because we take it very seriously. And I, I have yet to get a, th a third thing on anybody that has received that letter. But instructors absolutely have that first right. What I would tell you is my trend that I see is instructors are so generous. You all just give and give and give and they take and take and take. So give them the zero, call it a day or give them the F, you know, do that, call it a day because if they've cheated, they've cheated. Now you got to educate them on cheating, right? And they know what they're doing. Because when I was doing it at first, sometimes I'm in the meeting, I'm trying to figure out, do you really know what plagiarism is? They know what it is. They know cut and paste. They know all of that, right? So, so um, my thing would be hard. It's better to be hard in the beginning, be hard, and then it's easier to lighten up. It's hard to rein it back in when you've been too giving. You can't rein it back in. So go ahead and let's flip ahead because we're really... Short on time. Fifty Shades of Grey, for us, this was about, there's so, it's so gray in our world with conduct and behavior. And What I would tell you is document, document, document. And we gave you a handout about annoying, disruptive, and dangerous. Annoying are just, they're not, they're not violating the code, they're just annoying. So you just got to figure out, take notes and document. Um, it becomes disruptive when it takes away from teaching. I've got to stop and ask you to quit kicking the chair. Put your keys away. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. I should have paid you for that. Um, when it takes away from the lecture, that's disruptive. Send it to me. Send it to me because it's disrupting the learning environment. Think about everybody else that's sitting in the room. And the one scenario, everybody's sitting in the room and all of these really listening to the banter, getting annoyed. Now they're getting annoyed. They paid as well and we're dealing with your behavior. And this one, I, we're calling the cops again. Here we go. Let's see who's going to win. Who loses credit in those scenarios? The professor loses credibility, right? Here we go again. You can't control your class. Here we, let's see who's going to win. The professor's lost because 
they've already, you're not controlling it. You're not taking charge of it. So document, document. Um, again, and we write down kind of ABCs of documentation, all of that. Please read over that. That's a resource. Go ahead and flip ahead. Um, one thing that uh, I would tell you is just create a record for the annoying. Just really stay fact-based. I had one where it goes, either the student goes or I go. Oh, don't do that. You know, so because um, once I met with the student, we talked, I give them the thing, I'm like, we're going to go right now, walk over, and you're going to apologize to that instructor, and they were ready, and we get to the instructor and take them outside, and the student apologizes, and then I said, and this one knows that if they disrupt again, I will remove them from the classroom, no questions asked, the instructor was all, well, now, now, let's not go that far. He's really good, you know, and I thought, okay, that's all right, I'll do it. Because if the student will disrupt you, the student will go, not you. So, so please know that I'll drag him over to apologize to you if we need to do that. Because a lot of times, they really see the seriousness of being removed from the class and they need the class and all of that. So just keep good documentation. Don't hold on to it and say, oh, there's been a history. By the way, they've been misbehaving the whole semester. Now I'm really f at the end of my rope and I'm mad and I'm frustrated and I'm losing my patience. So don't do that. Send it to me because I, I may call up Francisco and go, you want me just to file this? I think you've handled it. He could say yes. Or you could say, Mary Kay, will you meet with them and just tell me what you want to do? And we'll have that communication. I'm fine filing it. Sometimes I may call and go, I'm taking this one. This is silly. You know, like, let me help. And um, we've done that. We've had one where the instructor sends a report. I, I respond back with, here's what we're going to do. No, don't do that. I'm not comfortable with that. How do you see this playing out? Because I don't think we can do it without them knowing it's you. What would make you comfortable? Come observe in my classroom. We did it. It's filed. That went back and forth five times, right? So I'm really, I want to do what's comfortable. I want to support. But I also want to hold the students accountable for what they're doing. Um, so read over that. Uh, what I would say is you don't want to feel sold out. So. You, it's, this is just about tips for, that we've learned and all of that. You know, from what, meeting with students, what I would tell you is learn their names, hold them accountable, be hard right away because they're looking for it. They want you to be, have your, your, your rules, your guidelines, your structure, but be fair and consistent, right? The girls are loud and you don't do anything with them. You didn't move them around. You've let him come in late all the time. So just be fair and consistent in how you're going to do it. Go ahead. The ABCs, it's about the person. So give me information. I need the name and the ID number, please. That helps because if there's three Mary Kays, I don't know which one you're talking about. The behavior, it's just the behavior, right? Keep your emotion out of it. Context of what happened, what was said. If they cuss, put the cuss word in there for me. Don't sugar it. Don't sweeten it up for me. I need to know exactly what was said and what you said back. Details. What was the effect? Has the behavior stopped? Do you feel they got it? Were they disrespectful in the meeting? Did they walk out and slam the door? I've had those reports. And then what do you want the follow-up and the response to be from me? Because I'll listen to that or I may go more. So that's how you can help me with the documentation. And it needs to be on that incident report, which is on Campus Life. You can read. Academic dishonesty, you have the, you address it and assign the consequence in the first. The second violation, I'm going to kick it to Linda or Daniel, depending on the area. These are all informals, and I document third. The three of us will meet with the student to decide if they stay in class. So it'll be a group decision. It won't be just one saying you're out forever. Um, please document, document, document for that. Academic, we also bought a resource. It's on the Campus Life website. It's called Raise Standards. It's on the CTE website. The link is there with the instructions. You can send a student to Campus Life web page. Click on that. There's instructions. You could ask everybody in your class to do it, the first assignment. It will email you. you, you have, they have to input your email. I encourage all of you to go on and do it. It's about ethics, integrity, group work, coming late, lying to your professor. It's way more than just cheating on a paper. So I really like it. Our nursing program is looking at requiring it as an admissions. So if you get it accepted, you've got to do the raise program because um, the pressure of that program sometimes forces their, their students to not do some ethical behavior and um, work off of each other. So please, please check that out. It's a great resource. One thing that I ran into with academic dishonesty, the professor was like, oh, I don't want to get them in trouble. 
And I'm all, they're not, you're not getting them in trouble. Their behavior's getting them in trouble. And they're like, well, isn't there something where I can educate them? So I found the race standards. So please use that if, because then you'll feel like, hey, we educated. You now know what that means. And then the next time you're not going to feel so bad. Students in crisis, this is a crisis, remember, it could be their crisis. So it could be that I broke my nail and I'm going crazy. Or it could be that they're going to hurt themselves or they've, you know, anybody else, anything like that. You call this line. We'll give you the handout. You call campus police. You can get on the phone. I've called the crisis line for the student. And I said, I have a student. They won't talk to you on the line. Here's what's going on. We talk. We ask questions. And then either they'll mobilize a unit or they'll, the student will come around and talk because sometimes they just need to know that it's okay that we're going to set up an appointment in the community. Um, but the next thing is you've got to submit an incident report to Campus Life. Curtis and I follow up. If we're, so, you know, Laura, I come and I tell her I don't want to live anymore. You don't let me leave. You get on that crisis line. You see Mary Kay, will you talk? No, I don't want to. How about if I call for you? Okay, you do that. So you call for me, hopefully you can get me to talk, because I trust you enough to come tell you that. If I get on, you need to be on your cell phone or get to another phone to get campus police there to help you. Sometimes the mobile unit takes an hour or two, so you may have other things to do and the campus police can take over. They'll then either try to contact us, um, they'll get help, they'll, they're trained to do this as well. Then you write us an incident report just telling what happened up to where you know, and then we'll follow up with Mary Kay, okay? so. Um, please don't be shy with that. Uh, the, the line, they're awesome. They're really, it's really helpful and great. I put down there the Campus Life website. If anything you walk away with, what is set your tone for your class, Campus Life, go to the website. We've got the links, the code, the incident report, the raised standards is all there and we'll add more as we go. Did you have a question? No. Okay. Go ahead, Curtis, switch it. So that bright yellow that's the incident report. Click on it. Don't get caught up on the boxes. I need your name. Their name and ID would be perfect. Just the facts, please. Send it in and we'll follow up. Students are concerned are just those that you're concerned about. Um, it's just that you're worried. Francisco sleeps all the time in my class. I'm really worried. He started off real peppy and now he's coming in. His clothing's not looking good. It looks like he's not eating. That You're just worried about him. Or this one's just staring at me the whole time. I'm not sure what's going on. Anything that your gut tells you, I'm just worried, please send it to us because we do follow up with those students as well. We might call up to say, are you comfortable meeting with us with the student? Because they're not in trouble. We're just worried about them, right? And that's, that's great. We're just worried about you and we want to talk. Then Curtis will we'll take them aside. We'll let them know where Cottage One is, that the resources are there, the services are there. I'm there to say, if you don't meet with Curtis, then I'm going to get pulled in to follow up and make sure they do that. So go ahead. So that's it. We kind of wanted just to let you all know there are trends of behavior out there. I think what I would have you walk away with, we gave you brochures, Campus Life, Student Health and Wellness, we're all resources. Even if you just don't know, call us, come send them to Campus Life, come get us because we're more than willing to A, come to a class, we're more than willing to meet with them. Um, but most importantly, document, document, document. Because if I don't have a, if it's not coming in, we don't know it's there to help to support you all because that's really the, what we sat down and was like, we're here to help you focus on teaching. You shouldn't focus on classroom behavior. And, and even at college, you do have to manage behavior at times. Not the majority, but some of the times. So have some of you all had some of those behaviors or incidences in your class? Yeah. Yeah, you do. You just have to, to say it. And if you need tricks and tips of how to say things, Curtis helped one instructor about how to have the meeting, put the table between you, have authority. You know, it was kind of, it really helped a lot just to put that instructor at ease of how to do this. And the meeting went great. So we're there to help as well. We don't have all the answers. We don't know half the time, but we do our best. So sometimes of reporting after the fact, too. I know I had a student and you and I worked on it. He did several things and none of the instructors, including me, did anything. And then after a fashion, we all sent in a whole bunch of reports, but you can get the trend. Right. But we could have caught that before everybody went through all of that. So, so yeah. So please do right away, because I'll start seeing the trend at two or three. 
instead of 10. So, and remember, if, they're ha if it's happening in one class, it's probably happening in several classes. So, all right, thank you all very much. Please call, write, fill out the incident report, and we're here to support.